what is up it is your girl we are back yet again and this time we're doing something a little different we're gonna do something a little fun because if you can't tell by the thumbnail of the video your girl went a little crazy and I bought 20 graphic novels in the span of two weeks I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Let me level with you here. Let me try to kind of make it feel better on myself for spending that much money in that short amount of time on a bunch of comics. But your girl's still feeling a little depressy. Your girl's still feeling a little stressy. We're in a pandemic. Coronavirus is striking once again. I mean, it never stopped. It is in full Empire Strikes Back mode. So I needed to buy myself some comics so that way I could read some comics. I could kind of distract myself from the rest of the world and just kind of live in my little comic bubble. Not only that, but if I'm really trying to give myself a reason for buying that many comics in such a short amount of time, convention season as we know it has been canceled and one of my favorite things to do during conventions, other than meet wonderful people of course, is to go through those cheap discounted trade bins that vendors have, you know, when you got long boxes upon long boxes of just $5 trades, $10 trades, $10 hardcovers. Listen, 90% of my collection comes from these discounted trade boxes. They're my absolute favorite thing about conventions. So your girl's just trying to fill the void a little by buying a bunch of comics because she can't go to a convention and buy a bunch of comics there. So if that's what I gotta tell myself to sleep at night, that's what I'm gonna do. I went crazy, like as the title states, as I've been stating, I kinda went a little crazy. Midtown Comics was having a ridiculous sale where everything was like 50 to 70% off. So of course, your girl had to buy a box of comics and I spent over $100 on all of this but there's some ridiculously good reads in here, so we're gonna jump into it. The first book that I picked up is No One Left to Fight. This is a really awesome title that was published by Dark Horse just last year. It was one that I unfortunately missed out on. I was really excited for it, but then somehow it missed my radar. I missed the first issue. It went to second printing. I just wasn't able to get a hold of it, and it made me really sad because this book is like peak aesthetic for me. It's super buff dudes. I think they're super queer dudes, and the creator basically described it as Dragon Ball Z in a comic with buff queer colored looking dudes. It is just peak aesthetic. I can't wait to jump into it. Look at some of these character designs, would you? These characters just look absolutely amazing. I'm really excited. So you're definitely going to be expecting to see this along with a lot of these other books in a future what I've been reading wrap up review. Going to the Chapel is a strange little book because it is published by Action Lab which is a publisher that I feel like I've heard of, but I don't really know anything that they've published. I'm sorry, but Action Lab and Getting to the Chapel is a book that I just, like it came across my radar. I think I read a review somewhere. I know it popped up in solicitations and I was like, huh, this book looks really neat. It's about a bride who on her wedding day has to fight off a gang. What more could you want from a book like that? So I'm taking a leap of faith with this new publisher and we're gonna give Going to the Chapel a chance because like I said, it's all about the peak aesthetic. It's all about the bride fighting. She's She's got a gun. You don't wanna mess with her. I'm hoping that this is gonna be a really great read. I'm trying to do better with reading black creator owned comics. Uh, I know that this is probably something that I should be doing all the time and I am severely lacking on it. But that finally gave me a reason to pick up Excellence from Image Comics that came out last year. Everybody was talking about it and for some reason I just didn't pick it up on my pool list. I have no idea why. I don't know if I was just in that weird time where I wasn't reading a whole lot or what, but Excellence is a book that comes highly recommended from a lot of the comic book community. It's black as fuck. It's black creator owned. It's magic. It's wizards. It's really exciting. I can't wait to see this very cultural, heavily inspired world that is brought to life in Excellence. And I'm just hoping that it is on par with books like Bitterroot and Black AF because we need more black creator owned comics in this industry for sure. Now when I buy trades, 
I try to stick away from buying cape comics unless it's a superhero, of course, that I'm absolutely obsessed with, like X-23 or Catwoman or whatever. But I try to stay away from superhero trades, and the reason for that is because a lot of those I can just get from my local library. Not only that, but for some reason, I feel like there's a higher risk reward system when it comes to superhero comics. Superhero comics, at least now, are very hit and miss to me. So I try to stick to mostly independent trades when I do my trade buying. However, I am going to make an exception for the Black Widow Complete Collection by Chris Samney and Mark Wade. So I read the first volume of Black Widow, this run by Black Widow, back in, I believe it was like my April, uh, what I've been reading comics wrap up. I, I've lost track at this point because we're in quarantine and the months are kind of just blending together. But I read the first volume of this Black Widow run and especially for somebody like me who's not the biggest fan of the character, I fell head over heels in love with this run. I mean, look at Chris Samney's art. Chris Samney's art is absolutely gorgeous. And this was one of these books that I knew I was gonna wanna pick up future volumes of, but then the library shut down. So when the complete collection went on sale for eight bucks, I'm gonna pick it up because I really wanted to read this. Not only that, but I know from covers that are in my collection that Bucky Barnes makes an appearance. And I am very excited to see him and Natasha get together because Natasha Romanoff, that girl has slept with everybody in the Avengers and has gotten with almost everybody in the Avengers to which I say, you go girl. Cause that is a bad bitch move right there. That is savage as fuck and I love it. But Bucky Barnes and Natasha Romanoff will always have a special place in my heart. And that is always going to be the man that she is going to come home to. So I am very excited as you can see. I'm very excited to see Bucky Barnes and Natasha be cute together and be assassins together and probably kill people together. Super excited. The Love She Offered is published by small indie publisher Sourcepoint Press, which if you checked out last month's What I've Been Reading video, which was published like last week because I was late on the ball, I also published Dead End Kids, which is another story that I was really, really fond of and I really, really enjoyed. So I wanted to check out The Love She Offered because I wanted to check out more from the publisher and spoiler alert, because I've already read this one, it is so good and it takes the comic book medium and changes what you think of it and what you expect of it and does something completely different. But I'm not going to tell you about it because you're going to have to check out my July what I've been reading. But just know this is a good book and I only paid $4 for it. So I definitely got every penny's worth, but it only has a price point of $9.99. So if you want something that's really good and kind of mysterious and kind of blows away all your expectations, I think you should definitely pick up uh, the love she offered because it really was just an amazing book. So read this, it's good. And then check out my July video when that eventually gets posted next month, uh, detailing everything that I read because this will be on there. I surprisingly don't have a lot of comics from Oni Press. I don't know why, it's just kind of, it's one of those publishers like IDW that's kind of just slid under my radar and I have no idea why. But Morning in America is a book that I had read the first issue of and I even did a small mini wrap up review of the first issue over on my blog that comicgirl.blogspot.com a little shameless plug there because i don't just do youtube videos i do paper reviews and in-depth thought pieces and stuff morning in america is a book i talked about and one that i really really enjoyed but didn't enjoy enough to pick it up issue by issue which happens as you'll see with a lot of these books um where i pick up the first issue and i really really enjoy the first issue but it's one of those books that i just feel like i'm gonna wait for the trade and that's what happened with Morning in America. But this book is just, it's kind of fun. It's really fun. It's set in the 80s. It follows the tale of girls. So it's kind of Paper Girls vibe. It's also really queer. And there's definitely a couple that remind me of Sailor Uranus and Sailor Neptune. And I really like that a whole heck of a lot. This is one of those books that is written by Mags Visaggio. And she as a writer is hit or miss for me. But this book, at least in its first issue, I really enjoyed. So I'm really excited to see where the rest of this one goes and to kind of see if it keeps up with those expectations that the first issue set. Pretty Violent is another book where I picked up the first issue and I kind of enjoyed it, but it was one of those ones that I decided to wait for the trade. That's something that I do a lot, if I'm being honest with you, is I take a lot of uh, first issues for indie publishers and I'll buy them and I'll read them and Sometimes I'll decide to stick them on my pull list, but sometimes I decide that I'm just gonna wait for a trade. It gives you a nice little teaser um, while also supporting these creators. But Pretty Violent is one of those that just didn't make the cut in terms of single issues month to month for me. Um, I actually, 
I'm at a really weird crossroads in my life right now where I'm torn between wanting to support single issues and buying all these single issues and just saying I am lazy and I want to read by trade because sometimes you don't want to take them out of the bags each and every month and reread them and I just really like the idea of a nice little you know combined story that I can just sit down and enjoy but that's a video for another day we're here to talk about Pretty Violent. So Pretty Violent is one of those quirky comedy um, violent action books. It kind of reminds me of I Hate Fairyland by Scotty Young. And I was actually really surprised when this book was announced and Scotty Young was not attached to the creative team because it looks and feels like a Scotty Young book. It feels like the superhero version of I Hate Fairyland as it follows the superhero that doesn't always do the best job and is always getting herself into trouble and often causes more harm than good but I'm excited to be able to just sit down with something that is lighthearted and funny especially in these times that we're living in because we're all just living in a corona crisis so I need a good laugh. Mark Millar is a very problematic comic book creator and is somebody that I always go back on the fence with because he's kind of a creep. He, he's kind of a creep when you look at some of the things that he does, some of the things he's, he writes, some of the, the standpoints that he takes. He's kind of a creep. That being said, Mark Millar wrote one of my favorite comics along with Stuart Immelin, and that is Empress, which was initially published by Icon, which if you didn't know was a weird imprint for Marvel Comics. Think Vertigo to DC, but Icon to Marvel. I don't know. It doesn't exist anymore. But Empress was one of those books that I absolutely fell in love with because it felt like Mad Max mixed with Star Wars. And if you know me, you know those are my two favorite properties in the entire world. So it was a match made in heaven and I really enjoyed that book. But I'm always on the fence with his writings because Mark Millar honestly feels like one of those creators that is so full of himself and thinks that he can do no wrong. And that kind of rubs me the wrong way. So I'm kind of taking a chance by picking up Space Bandits. However, if you look at the cover and you see these two badass space babes in space that are robbing people and being space bandits as the title says this is this is the peak aesthetic for a girl like me okay this is like this should just mars you should read this on the cover of it and i did read the first issue of space bandits and i really really enjoyed the first issue of space bandits but again it's mark millar as you can see mark millar so i was a little hesitant to pick up this book However, the Space Queen Bandit ladies are calling me, so I only paid like five bucks for this book, so it can't be too hurtful, right? Right? I hope I'm not regretting this one. I am going to butcher the name of this next book. I just know it. I'm just warning you in advance. However, Sukuban Turbo is a book that I have been eyeing forever. I discovered this book like two years ago when the like fourth issue was being published and I finally saw it in solicitation somehow and I was like, that is a peak aesthetic book. That is a peak aesthetic book, but it's on issue four. So it's like, I guess I'm just gonna have to wait for the trade. And then I never picked up the trade, but I have the trade now. But Sukuban Turbo, the reason why it is peak aesthetic is because it is about a Japanese girl gang, not even just a Japanese girl gang, a Japanese motorcycle girl gang. And the best part is, is it's actually based on a real group of women who ran a motorcycle girl gang in Japan. So I'm really excited to be able to see just female badassery. This book is also done by Victor Santos, who did one of my other favorite comic books, um, Violent Love by Image. So I really am a fan of his artwork and I know that he's really well at doing these gritty um, gang-like stories. So I can't wait to see what he brings to the table. But it, it's, it's a Japanese girl gang on motorcycles. You can't get any cooler than that when it comes to comic books. You just, you can't, it's not possible. All right, so remember when I said that I try not to buy superhero comics when I buy trades? Well, I lied, but it's for Catwoman, so it kind of breaks the rule. Now, as I stated in my what is on my comic book pool video months and months ago, maybe even years ago, thanks to the coronavirus, but 
I am so far behind on this series it's not even funny. I'm pretty sure that I've only read issue 7 out of what are we up to 23 issues now and it's honestly it's just because I like reading by the trade. I am so lazy when it comes to comics. I don't want to have to unbag and unboard and rebag and reboard and then have to put away into my giant filing cabinet every time I want to read a book. I just like to be able to sit down with one book, crack it open, and finish it. Is that too much to ask when it comes to my comic books? But this book was on sale for like $8 so I really had no excuse. It's gonna give me a reason to catch up with this book and hopefully maybe I'll just blast through all of the single issues that I have on top of this and finally catch up with Catwoman because I don't know what it's like now but when it started this was pretty much the best Catwoman series that we have ever gotten. So the fact that I have fallen off that ball honestly makes me a little sad and looking at this book there's not a number two on it and that bothers me because when it goes onto my shelf it's gonna look really weird that it's not labeled as a number two do you see that all right DC oh wait no it does say volume two but it says it on the back what good is that gonna do me when it's on a shelf and I can't see that it's volume two this is why you should hire me for your editing teams because then things like this don't get missed. So this last book is funny because it's comics will break your heart. And I'm gonna be honest, I picked this book up because of my girl Jen, whose Instagram and YouTube panel is comic books will break your heart. Not only that, but it is a very cute book. Kind of like Jack Kirby's granddaughter meets Stan Lee's granddaughter. I mean, obviously it's not them in the book, but how it's described is these two big heiresses and an heir from these two big comic book companies and creators come together and they fall in love, but there's this rivalry because one comic creator burned another comic book creator and it just sounded cute. It sounded like a great comic. I was really excited to get this book in the mail. And then when I got it, Well, I can't read. I'm gonna be honest with you. It has been a long time since I have read a real book. When I say a real book, I mean a not comic book. Now granted, I do still read some historical books. I read a lot about the badass women in history. I read a lot about the badass queer people in history. You see the theme here? I also read a lot of Carrie Fisher and Star Wars novels. So again, a running theme here, but it has been a long while since I have decided to read a fiction novel and not only a fiction novel, but what is deemed as a young adult fiction novel. However, I bought the book, so I'm going to give it a shot. And I mean, it is very cute. Like this cover is very, very cute. And it just makes me that more sad that it's not a comic, but I'm gonna give it a shot. So that's it. That's everything that I bought from Midtown Comics in my massive haul, except that's not everything. Did you think that we were done? Because there's a lot of books here and oh no, what have I done? But when your local comic book shops are having sales and you wanna support your local comic book shops and then you have things that are on pre-order that you just totally forgot were on pre-order because the coronavirus has totally skewed time and you have no concept of time. This is kind of what happens. So sit down, get yourself some popcorn, get yourself a little bit of ice cream, some iced tea, maybe a blue raspberry slushy, and let's, uh, let's dig into these ones. So Bad Weekend, I honestly picked up because the Nerd Burger cast, who's one of my favorite YouTubers to watch, and honestly inspires me so much when it comes to YouTubing, the Nerd Burger Kaz and her lovely husband Liam were talking about this book and I am not a big like true crime type of person and that's typically what Ed Brubreaker writes. However, when Liam was talking about how this isn't just your standard true crime book, that it has a razzle dazzle of comic book history, it has like a Jack Kirby-esque character who is convention famous and goes to the convention scene after a long period of absence, I was like, that sounds a little interesting. And it was very interesting. Spoiler alert, I read this one too. 
And spoiler alert, you're probably going to find me talking about this one. Well, you're definitely going to find me talking about this one in July's wrap up video. So if you want to hear more about Bad Weekend, you can do one of two things. A, you can wait for my July video. Or B, you can go over to the Nerd Burger Kaz's channel and watch her and her lovely husband Liam talk about this book. Or C, you could just watch both of us because there's your three options for Bad Weekend, I guess. Redneck is a book. This is volume two. I really, really love this series. I actually read Redneck volume one right before I started really doing YouTube videos and doing um, like the what I've been reading wrap ups every month. But Redneck is exactly as it sounds kind of. It's vampires in the south and the rednecks. So it's like True Blood, but without all of the drama and the sex. So it may or may not be better. You decide. But it is by Donny Cates and it does have one of my absolute favorite comic book characters of all time. Like it's just wonderful. And I, I thank Donny Cates and Image and everybody with this creative team for letting that happen. But Redneck is vampires and it's a really different vampire tale. And it was one of those books that I really wanted to read right after I finished the first one, but for some reason I didn't pick it up. So I picked up volume two and I'm probably gonna pick up volume three and four and go from there. So you're definitely gonna be hearing me talk about Redneck at some point, whether it's in a future comic book wrap up video or a horror video or an image comic video you should be reading. I just really wanna be able to talk about this book with you guys. So that's gonna be happening. Redlands is a little different than everything on this list. And why I say that is because I've actually already read Redlands, but when you see it in a bin for $5, you really don't have an excuse to pick it up. I really, really enjoyed Redlands when I read it a couple years ago. Um, it is witches down in the South and it's really gritty and really political, surprisingly. So it's another one like Redneck that I'm definitely going to be talking about in the future. But yeah, it's a $5 book. You can't, it's like, what is the excuse for passing up a $5 book? There's none. So. Redlands, it's gonna happen. Now, Grass Kings comes highly recommended from my girl, Life of a Geeky Mind, AKA Genevieve, who is one of the best people on Instagram. I really do love her uh, a lot. Um, but she was talking about this book a lot and it just seemed right up my alley. Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but Matt Kent and Jeff Lemire, I feel kind of go hand in hand. I feel like the two have very similar styles. That being said, I've only ever read one Matt Kent book and that was a dead shot one shot that he did. A, a dead shot one shot. Say that four times fast, dead shot one shot, dead shot one shot, dead shot one shot. Ooh, that kind of sounds kind of fun. But the only thing I've read by Matt Kent is that one shot that he did for the villains once and I really, really did enjoy it, but I never got around to picking up his indie stuff. So this is Grass Kings volume one. Spoiler alert, I have read this one too and I really did enjoy it. And it's another book that you're gonna see me talking about on the July wrap up video. So I guess at this point, there's a lot of really good books on the July wrap up and I guess you're just gonna have to watch it. I, this book, spoiler alert, I read this book too. And spoiler alert, it's gonna be on the July wrap up video, but Crowded is a book that I picked up the first issue for a long, long time ago when it first debuted. I never actually read it and I still have it tucked away somewhere down there in that little corner there. But I finally read this book and it is just, I'm just gonna go on a little tangent. We're not gonna go too far into it because it's gotta be safe for the July wrap up. But Crowded is so wonderful and it's such a comfort read. It's really fucking gay. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to use the hard F, but it is so gay, it's not even funny. It is my two favorite tropes in the whole wide world and I just can't wait for these ladies to get together because it is a slow burn, but it is definitely a gay burn and I love it and it's really fun. It's peak aesthetic. It's really witty, really modern, really humorous. And I just love the art in this book. I mean, look at how cute our characters are. Like, they're so wonderful and I love them so much. You're probably gonna see me talking about it again in the July wrap up video, but this book probably has one of my all time favorite comic book panels ever. Look at how cute he is. He's so stupid and his name is Dog and I love him and I would just... Have you ever seen a little creature that you want it to protect so much as you do with this dog? Cause that's me right now. Red Thorn is one of those few books that 
came out when Vertigo started publishing again, right around the time of the New 52. It's a book that a friend of mine had been reading at the time and I was also going to be reading it and then something happened and I just never read it. However, I finally got around to picking up Red Thorn because it was cheap, it was on sale, I wanted to read it. There's just one problem with Red Thorn. This is the cover, right? Beautiful, beautiful cover. Look at this back, look at this handsome man. He's so handsome. It's Irish fantasy mythology type thing. I'm really excited. Look at how pretty it is. And then you open the book and it's not as pretty. And this is just really depressing and makes me sad because while I understand the entirety of the book is not going to look like this, this is cover art. This is, you know, there's extra time taken into this to bring readers in. But when you open the book and it's that drastic, it depresses me a little. So I'm really hoping that the writing and the book itself is going to carry its way through and I'll be able to enjoy it just as much as if the art was a little better. And I feel bad for trashing a book before I even read it, but I was just really upset. Undiscovered Country, it felt like everybody was talking about this book and then out of nowhere everybody stopped talking about this book and I feel like it's because it's a Scott Snyder title and it was hyped up way too much for no good reason other than it was Scott Snyder doing an indie publishing book with Image Comics again. I had actually picked up the first issue of Undiscovered Country and I actually talked about it in my first ever new series comic book roundup which was published many moons ago when I first started this channel. I act like this channel is so old it's not. You're dumb Mars. Stop. But Undiscovered Country was one of those books where I enjoyed the first issue but not enough to continue and I just wanted to be able to read it in a full trade format. So that is what I'm going to do. I had this book pre-ordered at my local shop and then completely forgot about it. So that was a nice surprise when I went to pick up my books and they were like, surprise! You have another trade after you just bought like $170 worth of comics. Surprise! Speaking of comics that I've read that I got the trade of, this book looks a little familiar and that's probably because it was on my comic book pool list video. Um, but I'll be honest with you, I probably have only read issue three and I haven't read any issue since because life happens and you just forget about stuff and you don't feel anything anymore. But again, I just really like reading books by the trade and this was only $10. That being said, it only has issues one through four, which I thought was a little strange because I feel like a lot of the image titles, they at least go up to five or six. Sometimes they even go up to issue seven in their first collected volume. However, $10 is $10, so I'm not going to complain. And this is just going to be a nice little cozy Jeff Lemire book that I can curl up with in bed with a nice cup of coffee and enjoy and not have to worry about the stress of the outside world. So the last book on this list was actually an impulse buy. It is PTSD. It was published by First Second. And this is a book that I have had on my list for a long, long time. And I never broke down and bought it, probably because it has a $25 price point. But to be fair, this is a hardcover. And not only that, but it's a nice little die cut cover as well. So it's, it's really cool. It's really nice. So you get what you pay for the value and the, just the production of this book is absolutely amazing. I usually don't talk about like production values of books, but this one, when I got it, I was just like, that is really neat. And I really appreciate that. But PTSD was just one of those books where it's like, I wanted to read something personal. I wanted to read something special that I could connect with. And I felt like this is a book that I could connect with because we are in a very strange time right now. So sometimes you have to have a little self care and read those books that are going to feel special and personal to you. I am about halfway through this book. I really am enjoying this book. So it's probably one that you're going to see featured on the July wrap up as well, along with a bunch of other books that are here. But PTSD is just a very special book and I can't wait to talk more about it with you guys. But that is it. That is finally everything. Like $160, $70 later, 20 books later, 19.5 books later, if we don't count comic books, we'll break your heart. You know, it's just a really weird time. I just want to comfort and surround myself with things that make me happy. And that is comic books. That is you guys, of course. You know, I'm still working on my June wrap up video because that should be coming out shortly around the corner. 
but Mars, you've just posted a video wrap up video two weeks ago. Yeah, well, sometimes things happen, but if I'm being honest with you, the June wrap up video isn't as exciting. There's only about four books or so on there. So I definitely wanted to do something special with you guys. And what better way to do it than to share this giant big haul. As always, just you guys stay safe, be smart, social distance, wear your masks, because let's be honest, masks are cute. I wish that masks were like an everyday fashion thing at this point, because I'll be honest, I know I look cuter when I'm wearing a mask, so why can't we wear masks all the time? But that is it for me. I will see you guys in the next video as always. Bye! Well, that was a lot of fun. Do you know what else is a lot of fun? This Friday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I have been invited by Dan and Jen to be a part of their show, The Long Box Paradox. So I will be leaving a link in the description below for that, and I hope to see you all there this Friday.